kid. Seriously. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Penalty Kill edition of the Star Wars in Review podcast. Playing shorthanded today, as I am without my podcasting better half, Maya Madrid, I am Luke Neitzel, and we have a mini-episode for you today. But before we jump into that main topic, I wanted to give you an update as to why you're getting a mini-episode and not a main episode today. Nothing is wrong. In fact, We are very proud that as two guys who have families and full-time jobs and activities outside of work, we have been able to keep a pretty regular podcast schedule and put out as much content as we possibly can. So it's inevitable that one day it was going to happen where we were not able to get together. I currently, as you are listening to this, am on vacation many, many states away. Maya and I had planned to get together early so that we could pre-record a bunch of episodes of things and have them set to go so they'd automatically launch while I was out of town, but unfortunately, some health conditions got in the way for Maya that prevented us from getting together and recording that material. But what we didn't want to do was not put anything out, so I have recorded this little mini-episode on my own as well as recording several Maya and Luxia trailers on my own that you'll hear this week as we try to uh, get through this this deep separation from each other, which is so hard for us emotionally. But the good news is, is right now it looks like we will be able to be back together and have everything up and running as it always is for next week's show. So instead of me uh, reviewing a Clone Wars episode by myself for 40 minutes or so, we're going to give you an episode today, a mini episode, talking about something that I really, really like and I'm interested in and wanted to share a few examples of you with. And that, of course, is fan films. Now, part of the reason Maya and I do this podcast is we are people who are passionate about pop culture, we're passionate about Star Wars, we're passionate about movies, and we wanted a chance to kind of create something on our own. We don't have a ton of resources, we don't have a ton of time, we don't have a ton of experience, but doing the podcast and putting out our little trailer reviews is a way for us to do something creative that is really fun for us and kind of scratches that itch that we have that we can't devote our whole lives to. So I have a deep appreciation of people who go out of their way to embrace something they love and put their own creative stamp on it. Not only to take the time to make a fan film, to plan it out, to write it, to act it, to produce it, to film it, but who also have the courage to put it out there on the internet for everyone to see. As we all know, the internet can be a pretty merciless place and uh, you can put yourself out there you can hear some pretty terrible criticism. So I have big props to anyone who is willing to put in the time and the effort to put together a great fan film and see what happens with it. So the one thing you're not going to hear me do on this episode is rip on anyone's fan film. I'm not here to make fun of people because they're they're taking a, a leap of faith in doing that, and I applaud everyone who is willing to do that. So I'm going to recommend four different fan films today that are of varying production quality. But I think you should check them all out anyway and encourage the people who do. So if you're going to leave a comment, leave a positive comment for them. If you don't have anything positive to say, just ignore it and move on. Feel free to direct your negativity at me because I really, really enjoy that, to be honest. So let's jump right in. And I'm going to start with something that is probably as good a fan film as you are going to find. It came out in 2016. It is Darth Maul Apprentice, and this, like all of the other fan films I'll discuss, you can find for free on YouTube, so go check them out. Darth Maul Apprentice is the story of Darth Maul training and kind of his final steps to being recognized as a full Sith Lord. So he is out there on an isolated planet doing his training when he encounters some foes that he is going to have to take on. I don't want to get too deep into the story because I want you to check it out and I want you to enjoy it. But there is something really special about the quality of this film. It is something that could fool you into thinking it was made by Lucasfilm almost. The makeup is spot on. Darth Maul looks fantastic. The other... I'll just let it out of the bag. The Jedi he encounters are well-designed. They have a a level of visual effects that is something beyond what an amateur could do. You can tell this was done by people who have experience and who had a lot of resources and time, even though it's still a fan film. But 
what jumps out to me the most about this film is the insane choreography for a fan film. This, like a lot of fan films, is basically going to be a, a fight sequence. That's what the majority of the film is. And the choreography in this is insane. It's better than you will see in the original Star Wars trilogy as far as the lightsaber battles go. They put a lot of time and effort and practice into making this fight be exciting, be acrobatic. It, it's the level of skill you would see from professional athletes and what they're doing. So I had a real appreciation for how much work they put into this. Now, it's very obvious from the behind-the-scenes feature that they they have that this is this is not just two guys with a camcorder going out and making a movie. These are people who have experience in the film industry. But it's still a non, non-profit, just really fun fan film. It, it sets the bar really high. It's going to be a hard one to top. Um, the other thing I'll mention that it does that I love is Darth Maul has no dialogue. And if you've listened to the show, my favorite Darth Maul is when he never talks. He should not have had a line in Phantom Menace. He's scarier that way. I love him that way. So this was a great representation of him. And it's a fun movie. So go check that out. It's called Darth Maul Apprentice. And it was done by the YouTube user T7 Pro. The next film I'm going to talk about is called Knights of the Old Republic, Broken Souls. Which, as its title alludes, brings in some of your favorite Knights of the Old Republic characters. And this is another one. It's only about seven minutes or so. That is a battle sequence. But it's got a pretty great production value. It actually won a Star Wars fan film award for special effects. I think it's really fun to see characters from the Old Republic. Because we don't get that quite as much as we get things from the main trilogies that we now have. So it's got great costuming again, high production value, some fun special effects, and some fun battle sequences. And it's it's very brief, so it doesn't take a lot of your time. It's something you can watch pretty quickly and enjoy and have a good time. And that was done by CH Films. So look for them on YouTube. The next one I'm going to talk about came out just over a month ago. It came out in February. It's called the J the Gray Jedi, a Star Wars film, and it's less of a story then it is kind of a character introduction, but it does it really well. It introduces a new Jedi who's a little, as the title alludes to, he's a little more in the middle and kind of his motivations and his battles and who he is. It's a great little vignette of a Jedi that I think by the end you would want to see more of and would be interested in learning about. It also has kind of a unique design with the mask that that Jedi wears. And it's an exciting little film that's done differently than just setting out and having a battle. I like that there's some story elements to it. There's some character depth added to it. It's fun, and it's a really great effort. And that one is done by B Arts Production. B as in boy, Arts Production. So go check that one out. And the last one I want to talk about is probably my favorite of them. And it's called The Sith Relic. And this is by far done with the least amount of resources. This is someone who you can feel their passion and love for Star Wars come through on screen, even if they aren't a professionally trained actor, uh, a professional writer, or any of those things. But it's someone who absolutely loves Star Wars and wanted to do something that was a part of it, so they made this film. It follows the story of an Imperial Guard, which is my favorite costume design of all time, by the way, in Star Wars, those red Imperial Guards who has escaped the Death Star as it is blowing up on Endor and crash lands on Endor and has to deal with, will the the rebels find me? Will the Imperials that are down there think I'm a traitor because I should have died with the Emperor? And how will he handle that situation? And it's a good time. You can tell that it was produced in uh, a backyard because they use a lot of woods, which is what's great about Endor is anyone can find an Endor that they can film in. The passion on this really just comes through, and I, and I love that. I love seeing people put themselves out there and do something something that's a risk and, and, and really really taking that chance. So I, I hope if you watch any of these that you will check out the Sith Relic first. You'll, uh, you'll see that from Scruffy Looking Workshop as the YouTube user, and I hope you'll enjoy it for exactly what it is and uh, w- what, it's, what it's trying to be, and I, and I think that's something really, really special. So... That is just kind of my brief foray and recommendation into some fan films. This is an endless hole that you can go into if you really enjoy it. If you just want to YouTube Star Wars fan films, you will have thousands upon thousands of entries, and you can really get lost going in there and looking for fun ideas, new concepts, people playing with stuff, different qualities of filmmakers. So I hope you will take the time and enjoy it. It can fill a a little Star Wars hole in your life as, you know, Rebels is over and we got a little time before Han Solo 
So go out there, check them out. Also, let me know what your thoughts are and your comments are. Did you like any of the ones that I recommended? What did you think of them? I'd be interested to hear. So we will be back next week as normal. That's the plan, at least for now. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Luke underscore Neitzel, N-E-I-T-Z-E-L. And always, of course, check out my better well-spoken and better writing partner, my at Maya Madrid, at his Twitter account. And uh, wish him well as he recovers a little bit. So, hey, guys, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for uh, sticking with us while we have this kind of mini break. And we hope you enjoy some of this different content that we're putting out to fill in the time. So, take it easy. Thank you for listening to Kids Seriously. This episode was recorded and produced at Camro Studios. Visit our website at www.kidsseriously.wordpress.com or email us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Kids Seriously. Until next time.